What's up everyone, I'm Kaz, welcome to the beginner's guide to your Neptune 4 printers. First we're gonna look into our frame, then we'll make sure the height of our printer is correct. After we will check the wheels on our machine, then we'll work on our bed level and how to access clipper. Finally we'll clean up and print. Just before I get right into this video, I would like to quickly mention that this is a beginner's guide on getting started with some tips. Most problems people have had with this printer is not setting the Z offset and bed level. If you have further problems, I will try to link some stuff in the description to help. Securing the printer's frame. One of the things you need to make sure is your printer frame is secured. You want to go around your printer making sure every screw is nice and tight, but please do not tighten here. This can cause Z wobble so they should be left alone. If they're tight, just loosen it a little. Now make sure the frame is nice and level. For me, I had to put tissues underneath my printer's foot since I couldn't loosen the feet anymore. An uneven printer could cause faults. The X axis. First, we're going to move our printer's height up a bit to allow us to put two objects of equal height next to the arm of the printer. If you don't have any objects, there is a design on the frame of the printer that you can use as a reference, but you'll have better results using objects to help. Now we're going to loosen the screws at the top. You don't need to remove them, just make them loose, trust me. If you need to, change the height of your Z to make it easier for you to access the screws. Bring the printer down until it's on top of the object, then press down on the X axis then tighten the screws we just loosened, securing the wheels. On your printer you'll find a few wheels, for the arms there are about 3, 2 on the outside, 1 on the inside. For the bed there should be about 4 to 6 depending on your printer. Check to see if there are any loose wheels, if so, we're going to want to tighten the wheels that have the eccentric nut on. Don't make this too tight. We want to make sure the wheels aren't able to be pushed, but not impossible to move, you'll cause wear and tear. On the arms, the eccentric nuts are on the inside, but for the bed, using my plus as reference, the eccentric nuts are located here. One on the left, and three on the right. When messing with the eccentric nuts, check all of them, to make sure nothing gets loose. So when doing the arms, just turn it until the wheels are gripped. For the bed, tighten the opposite side which helps sandwich the bed together bed leveling and clipper. I might be overdoing it, but you're better off being precautious than having a fault which could easily be done if you put in that extra time. I would also suggest that you should invest in a feeler gauge. This will save you so much time and it's a lot easier to know if you have the right height. First off, I'm going to set my Z offset. To do so, go into the level and check. I'm going to use my feeler gauge at 0.1 of a millimeter, which is the size of an A4 paper. Little tip, if the 0.1 millimeter isn't working for you, just use the next one up or down. You really need to make sure you are getting as close as possible, enough to where you can feel it grip the gauge but not enough to move the printer's head. Now we want to save and move over to Clipper. To locate Clipper, first we want to go into our settings, about machine, and then locate your printer's IP. Get onto your browser and place the IP into the URL. If you are using Orca, you can add your printer, which can allow you to print wireless and to use Clipper. I would highly recommend Orca, because I have had better experience using it straight from the box. You might see that the program is called Fluid. Don't worry too much about this, just go into the settings and change the layout. We're now going to set up this cool thing, which will save you hours of work. Screw, tilt, adjust. Go back to Clipper, configuration, and go into printer.cfg. In the description is a forum page for clipper bed level. If you scroll down you'll come across the settings for screw tilt adjust. We're going to want to copy this whole message and paste it somewhere into the printer's config file. Since my printer has 6 adjusters, I had to add more to the screw tilt setting. When it comes to this, the two in the middle don't really move, so ideally you want the middle to be the starting point for it. This is because it uses the first point of measuring as the reference for the rest of the printer. Horizontal move, Z, is the height of where the Z starts the measuring. Speed is the movement of the printer head. Although our printers can move quickly, I went for 150 just in case. When it comes to the screw thread, CW means clockwise, CCW is counterclockwise. Since clockwise is to tighten, we won't be making any changes to that. M3 is the type of threads our adjusters use. M3 or M4 is the most common. For Elegoo, it's M3. For my printer, again, I'm using the plus. I'll put my settings in the description. But when it comes to setting your locations, I found that using the manual lever from the handheld allows the printer to kind of give you a good general idea. And you could use the coordinates on clipper. Then you could use the measurements from the extruder to the sensor, which is at the back left of the extruder. And then you just do the calculations to it. Dust off your PEI sheet and turn the bed to your ideal printing temperature. For me, I'll be using 65 as I'm printing with PLA plus. 
I also have it on 10 to 30 minutes. We want to get as accurate of a reading as possible and simulate a live print and heat warps the metal. You'll also notice on Clipper, there is a new button that will show up. Before we click this, we need to home our printer. Then we can use our new best tool. You'll see your printer go around on each location after which we can read what we have to do in the console box here or we could click on this console tab to see more. You'll get a message like middle screw, left coordinates, CW or CCW, 00, 29 minutes. This is using clock form to tell you how much you need to turn. CW again clockwise and CCW as counterclockwise. The goal is to be at least 5 minutes or less. 6 or more will still need to be adjusted. So go around your printer and work each corner. Once done, home your printer and start again. Do this for a while until you can consistently keep a number down. I will skip ahead to show you. This is why we check again. The times are slightly different but still under 6 minutes. This is apparently good enough. Ideally, I like to get as close to 1 minute but that's me. Now let's go over to our tune paid. If you did an auto scan on the handheld, this is where your virtual mesh lives. Other than that, just click calibrate and let your printer do the auto work. Once it is done, you can now see the mesh of your printer bed. If the bed is level but showing red or dark blue, it is okay, there might be something you need to do to sort this out. I'll see if I can find something and link it down in the description. You should be good to go. If one of the corners, like mine, is high up or low, don't be too concerned. Sometimes it happens. You should be fine. Often you won't really be printing in the corners or just flip the model around. There's probably a fix somewhere as well and I'll try and link that if I find it. Now, if you're having a mountain or bowl-like issue, like mine, here's a little trick that can help. Remove the PEI sheet from the print bed. Tighten or loosen the two screws center of the bed so slightly. This will lift or lower the center of your bed, which can give you a more flatter reading. Be careful though, the bed is still very hot. Once done, put your bed sheet back on and restart the process. Home your printer, screw tilt adjust until consistently under five minutes. Then calibrate the bed. As mentioned before, I like to aim for a minute or less. And as you can see with my printer mesh, some trial and error, I managed to get my bed mesh to be more flat to a point that I'm happy with. And now it's time to work our offset again. When it comes to setting your offset, never do it through Clipper. Changing these settings can cause your printer to dig deep or sit too high on your printer, preventing you from printing or causing damaging results. If you have, just go onto your printer config file, press Ctrl F and locate Z underscore offset. Remove the hashtag and make sure it's set to 0, 0.00. We need to do our Z offset on the handheld. So open up the level section on the handheld and work on your Z. But we are not done here. We then want to do another scan, but this time on the handheld to make sure our printer remembers our mesh. So tap on automatic and let it do its work. Once you have done all of this, redo your Z. You'll see that I went from negative 1.38mm to negative 1.26mm. Click save and you're good to go. Just a little side note, whenever you're working on changing your Z settings you must do it here. If you are printing and you change the height while it's printing, it might not save after the print. So just remember, keep record of your changes and go back here, save and you should be good to go for your next print. Cleaning. We want to make sure our bed is nice and clean and ready for printing. After all the work we have just done, our hand oils have just caused the bed to be less sticky and will make the print slip. So what we're going to need is dish soap, microfiber towel, alcohol, ideally a spray bottle, and another microfiber towel. The soap is to remove the oils our PEI sheet has. Then you're going to want to drive the sheet, use alcohol, and wipe the whole bed. Finally, leave the sheet to dry for 10 minutes to ensure it's all good. Trust me on this, I've made the mistake by drying the sheet, thinking it's all good, turning it on and the print just kept failing until after 10 minutes or so it started to work. You should now be ready to print. Here you can see that I have printed 6 dinos, this is after a full 2 days without making any more changes and I could still keep going if I wanted to. As I have said before, if you are coming across issues with your printer, I will list some stuff in the description to help. This is just a beginner's guide, so don't expect the most detailed information for this printer and clipper. Once you do get this printer going, it is a great printer. I will also list Reddit pages where you can get help and the official Discord server. I'll try to answer some questions in the comments, but I am new to this too. I also do live streaming on my other channel, Casa 390 if you want to check that out too. 
If you do enjoy this video and would like to see more, please hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.